Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Worksheet Smart Views webinar. My name is Nick, and I will be doing the presentation for you today. Just like every other presentation, everybody is going to be muted. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and type those in at any point. And at the at conclusion of the webinar, I will go through and answer any questions that have come up. I'm just going to go over a quick lesson overview of what we're going to cover today. So in Envisioneer, you have the ability to insert Smart Views. Uh, working drawings are created in a special drafting environment called your worksheet view. Here you can set up and annotate your various 2D and 3D views of your model to create and complete a set of construction do documents. Some of the topics that we're going to cover today are going to be uh, working on your worksheet views, inserting your views, adding detail to your inserted views, and then updating the views with any kind of a model change that you have done. So the first thing we're going to look at is looking at, or sorry, is insert or your worksheet views. So Envisioneer has two environments, your model view environment where you construct your model and your worksheet view environment where you create your construction documents. These two, do, these two environments are laid out in a similar fashion, but each has a different content and its own specific set of tools. When you enter a worksheet view, you are no longer building your model. You are actually working with 2D views of your model, such as your floor plan, elevation sections, details, and uh, details to create your construction documents. So remember to always build your model first and make sure it is complete before starting your construction documents. Once you have completed your model in your model view, you can go into your worksheet view by selecting on one of the view tabs next to your model view tab, which you can see down here at the bottom of my screen be it floor plan, elevations, details, or site plan. By default, every new project contains those four predefined worksheet windows. You can edit the properties of these windows, and you can also create new windows as needed. Each worksheet can have a different view of your model on it, and you can insert multiple views on one sheet if you want. You can also add many different types of objects and information to your drawings, such as text, dimensions, lines, and shapes. You can also import your CAD files, any images, and PDF files as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to switch over to your um, working drawing sheets. So like I mentioned, at the bottom next to your model tab, you're going to have your floor plan tab. And when you click on this, you're going to see um, your floor plan or your model switches over to the worksheet view and you're now looking at a title block. And this is your worksheet view. So next we're going to look at inserting views. So once you have set up a sheet, you are ready to insert a view of your model onto it. In your worksheet view, these are called smart views. You can insert floor plans, elevations, sections, and even 3D views using the Define Smart View tool. A sheet could contain a single view or multiple views, and each view can be inserted at a different scale. The view that you insert is generated directly from your 3D model created in your model view. So therefore, it is important to make sure that your model is complete and final before creating your construction documents. Adding tech, or sorry, adding dimensions to your floor plans. If you've inserted in uh, things like text and dimensions in your model view, these objects will be included in the view that you insert in your worksheet view. So before inserting a floor plan on a worksheet, you may want to take advantage of the automatic dimensioning tools offered in your model view, your auto exterior dimensions and your auto interior dimensions, as these tools will automatically find the openings and corners in your model and insert the appropriate dimensions. These tools are not available in your worksheet view, so that's why it's important to take advantage of them in your model view. So to do that, we're going to switch back to our model tab. This brings us back into our model environment where we're creating our model. And I'm going to go up to Tools, Dimensions, and I have an Auto Exterior Dimensions tool. And depending on what I have my dimension settings set to, it will take advantage of those settings and use those to create my auto exterior dimensions. And those settings are going to be located under your settings, document settings, and then under dimension auto exterior, you can actually go through and specify how you want your exterior dimension settings to look when you insert them. 
So if I go back to Tools, Dimensions, and I go to Auto Exterior Dimensions, I simply left click on that and it will automatically drop in all of my exterior dimensions, finding all of my openings and corners to add those dimensions in. To do the auto interior dimensions, it's a little bit different. You select your tools, dimensions, you're going to select your auto interior dimensions, but this time it's not as automatic. You have to specify where you want those dimensions to go. But what you're going to simply do is you're going to left click once, and I always go to the exterior side of my drawing. I drag a line all the way through and I left click again. And what that does, it'll add a dimension line across the line that you've drawn on your screen. So you just go through your model and wherever you want to show those openings, you would go across your model like so. And you can also go left and right, up and down, whatever you feel is going to be beneficial to show as a dimension on your screen. So now we're going to look at inserting your floor plans on your drawing sheet. So once your model is complete and fully dimensioned, you can insert views of it onto your working drawing sheet. This is one of the last things you should do before printing. So to do that, we're going to switch back to our one floor plan tab. So we're going back to our worksheet. And then you can use the Zoom to Fit tool if, it's, if you've zoomed out or anything, you want to see this entire title block. We're okay right now, but if you needed to, you can select this zoom to fit button down here. And then we're going to go up to insert smart views and define smart view. So you can go to insert smart views and click the define smart view option. Or if you like using the tab option, go to the insert tab. And then the first option or the first button you see here is your define smart view. This will bring up the insert smart view dialog box. And we're going to click on the 2D tab and then the location dropbox and then select the location that you want to create a view of. So we want to be working on our ground floor. In the properties pane, you can select the scale for your inserted view. Even though the worksheet is set to a certain scale, you can control the scale of each view that you insert. So right now we're setting this up at a quarter inch scale. And you could adjust this so it is smaller or bigger, depending on what you need, but just use simply using that drop down right there. You can use the tools in the dialog to customize the view. What you see in the preview window is what you will get. So if I was to just zoom over on this corner and I only wanted to show a portion of the house, I would do this. And then when I insert this, I'm only going to see this part of the drawing. So whatever is in this window right here is what you're going to see when you import it. And that's what this is. This is that preview window. Down here in the bottom, what we have are insertion options. We have an image and a drawing option. An image option is, will create a snapshot of the view and insert it like a picture. Uh, image views can't be further manipulated and it'll just be like a pixelated drawing or sorry, a pixelated image. The drawing option inserts the view as a drawing object that you can further manipulate using your CAD tools. So it will convert it into like a line drawing. The view filter tool is handy when you only want to show certain elements. So if you're showing just a reflected ceiling plan, or if you just want to show um, just the framing, you can use the view filter tool to change that. And we're going to click on that now because I don't want to see the terrain. So I'm going to go to elements on terrain. I'm going to simply close the eye on terrain and say OK. And now that big green square is gone and it allows me to zoom in even further. We also have a display mode option. This allows you to choose from wireframe, hidden line, shaded, rendered, rendered outline, and patterned. And it's just different views that you can use to show how you want that drawing to be represented in your view. So if I selected patterned, it's going to show the hatch pattern of my walls, and anything else that I have inserted that needs to be hatched. And your wireframe is your default setting. That's what you want to be inserting at. It's just going to show just your lines as they were drawn. And then you also have your zoom and pan tools. These allow you to change 
uh, the zoom level or zoom in and out on selected areas of your drawing. And that are these options right here. So when you're ready to insert your plan, you can click on the insert button and then the plan is now attached to your cursor. So again, making sure I have the entire floor plan in this preview window so that I'm seeing the entire floor plan, I just simply click insert. And now attached to my cursor is that floor plan. And then I can position it within my title block and then left click to insert it. The floor plan is then inserted as a block meaning all the objects are merged into one solid object. This will allow you to move the entire floor plan as one unit if you need to. And what we mean by that is if you just simply select it, it's just one giant block that I can use this move grip and move it if I wanted to move it up to the top corner because I want to show an after plan or if I need to show another floor plan off to the side, I can do that. So next we're gonna look at adding detail to your inserted views. So if you want to edit an inserted view, you can explode it and modify each entity individually. You can also add various types of information to your drawing, such as lines, shapes, hatching, detailing, text, and dimensions. So you can select the modify pull-down menu, and you can use any of the tools in here to physically manipulate any of the objects within that smart view. You can select the draw pull-down menu. This menu lists a variety of uh, things that, I'll, like, that you can add to your drawing, which includes lines, shapes, hatching details, uh, such as insulation. And you can use the tools pull-down menu. Here you can find a variety of text and dimension tools to help annotate your plan even further. Just a quick note to remember that the extra lines and hats that you add here are not linked back to your model. So any modifications you make here will not be reflected in your model or any subsequent views that you insert. If you want to make changes other than line work changes, it is best to make them in your model view first. Changes you make in your worksheet view will mainly be line work changes. And just another tip here, you can use the import image tool to import a BMP, JPEG, GIF, PNG, or TIFF file onto your worksheet, such as your company logo. Another thing to note too is if you do use the explode option, you're basically breaking that link back to your model. So what you can do um, Alternatively, is you can select the um, redefine, or sorry, the block definition option over here. There is a definition and you can click edit. And this will basically bring you inside of that block. And I can now select individual lines and make adjustments to those individual lines. The advantage of this is it keeps it as a block. I'm not exploding it. I'm not breaking that link back to my model view. So if I move anything in here, it's still going to be replaced if I do an update in my model view, but at least you're not exploding it and breaking that linkage back. To get out of editing a definition, you can see that there is a dotted line which basically represents that you're inside that block. You just simply click escape on your keyboard and it brings you back out and you're now back outside of that block definition. So again, if you want to edit an inserted smart view without exploding it, select the smart view that you've inserted and then on the right hand side under definition click edit and that will bring you inside the block definition and again make your changes there press escape to get out and you're back outside so next we're going to look at updating views with any kind of a model change that you've made so your model should be as complete and final as possible before you start creating your working drawings. However, last minute changes are sometimes inevitable. If you make any changes to your model in your model view after you have created your working drawings, you can use the update smart view tool to instantly apply those changes to an inserted view in your worksheet. So for example, if you add a window to the model and then update a smart view, the window will then appear in your smart view. 
Again, to note that the update Smart View tool does not work on Smart Views that have been exploded. So I'm going to go back to my model tab. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a window right here. So I'm going to go to my windows. I'm going to select a five foot by four foot double casement window. And I'm going to place the window right here by centering it on the wall. Okay. So now we have our smart our model view still, but we don't have a dimension here. So I'm actually going to go back up to settings, or sorry, tools, dimensions, and I'm going to go back to auto exterior dimensions. I'm going to get a message dialog box telling me you're running this command. This will delete any of your exterior dimensions that you already have in. Do you wish to continue? Yes. I want to get rid of all the old ones because I want to include that new one. I click yes, and it basically just adds in that new dimension string for that window. Once I've made the changes, I'm going to go back to my floor plan, and I'm going to go to inserts and smart views, and I'm going to say update smart view, or I can go to my insert tab, and under smart views, just click update smart view. And I'm going to zoom in on this so that you can see what's going to happen here. And if I go to update smart view, I click on that smart view, and it automatically replaces the smart view that I've inserted and updates it with the new changes that we've made. A note here, you cannot update 3D views of your model or any view that was inserted using the image option instead of the drawing option. When you update a smart view, you are changing its definition. This means that all inserted instances of that smart view will update on all worksheets. So if you had this inserted on multiple worksheets for different plans, it's going to update all of those worksheets. And then just a tip here, if you have several different smart views that you want to update with changes to your model, you can use the Update Smart View Global tool, which lets you update multiple smart views simultaneously. So what that means is if I have my elevations in here as well, that's going to represent a new change because I have this window on here. I could simply select the update smart views global and it'll show me all of the inserted smart views that I have and I can select the ones that I want to update and then it'll make the changes to the ones that are actually selected. I only have the one smart view inserted so that's why we're only seeing that one option there. So I'm just going to go over a quick review of what we've covered today, and then I'll open up the questions section. So once you have built your model in your model view, you can create your construction documents in your worksheet view. To create a construction document, you first open a worksheet view window, then insert the views of your model onto the worksheet, such as your floor plan, elevations, sections, or 3D views, and then add further detail if necessary. Some points to remember. In Envisioneer, there are two distinct work environments, your model view and your worksheet view. In model view, you construct and edit your model, and in your worksheet view, you prepare your views of the model to print out. The model view window in which you create your model is a model view window. There are four predefined worksheet view windows, your floor plan, elevations, details, and site plan. Selecting one of the view tabs next to the model tab takes you into your worksheet view. And you can use, so you can also use the window menu to access your view windows. Before inserting a floor plan on a drawing sheet, make sure that you take advantage of the auto exterior dimensions and auto interior dimensions tools offered in model view. These tools are not available in your worksheet view. You can use the tools on the draw menu to add lines, shapes, hatching, and details to your worksheet. Text and dimension tools are going to be found under your tools menu. And you want to make sure your model is as complete as possible before creating any of your work and drawings. If you have to make last minute changes to your model, you can use the update smart view tool to provide inserted smart views with your changes. So again, I'm going to open up the questions section. So if you do have any questions on what we've covered today, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in and I will go through and answer those for you. So one question is, do you suggest adding all notes, room labels, et cetera, everything but dimensions in worksheets? 
I would typically go through and in my model view, I would add in uh, my room names in here as well. Um, but dimensions definitely in your model. Text is preference. Um, you can add in your room names here if you wanted to, but it's going to be the same in model and in sheet. It's just a matter of going to tools, text, and text. And you, you're going to see the same dialog in your sheet view. So that is going to be more preference based, um, but definitely your dimensions, yes. I'll leave the question section open for a little bit longer. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in. If by chance you can't think of a question right now, but something comes to you later on, you can contact our support department and they will be able to help you out with any questions that you do have. I will also be sending out an email at the conclusion of the webinar that will have a PDF of what we've covered today as well. So that way you have something to reference back to as well so you can try this on your own time. Another question that came in, not really related to what we covered today, but I'll try and answer it anyways, is can we see both your 3D and your floor plan view at the same time in model space? In your model space, we have what we call a window option. And under our window option, we have a cascade open views or tile open views. So what you can do is you can create a second model view, add a model view. That's going to go to the end. You can make that a 3D view that you want. And then what you can do is kind of just manipulate the views around. So that way you're looking at your model view and your floor plan at the same time. Now, they don't automatically tile in that manner, so you won't be able to do that. But at least you can see both. Um, Again, I'll leave the question section open for just a little bit longer. And like I mentioned earlier, there will be a PDF sent out as well. So it will cover everything that we have uh, touched on today. That way you can go about it at your own pace as well.
Well, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. And again, if you do have any questions now that the webinar is over, you can contact our support department and they will be able to answer any questions that you may have had. Again, I look forward to speaking with everyone again very soon. And thanks again for attending. Have a great day.